Constitutional Conversations is a series of discussions by America's leading scholars about the principles, framing, ratification, and implementation of constitutional government in the United States. This series is hosted by the James Madison Memorial Fellowship Foundation of Alexandria, Virginia. First, there was the Virginia Plan introduced by the Virginia delegation. And then, having set the tone, they discussed that. And a conflict er arose over the representation of the states. And because a compromise could not be reached on June the 11th, Roger Sherman and others decided to introduce a contrary plan. So the first two weeks of progress came to a full stop and the New Jersey plan was introduced. And the main difference between these two plans are, first of all, the states remain central in the New Jersey plan, and we the people are left to do our political business at the state level. And secondly, the powers of Congress in the New Jersey plan are, as they were in the Articles of Confederation, expressly stated but with just two more powers over interstate commerce and taxation, which everybody felt were lacking under the Articles. And that plan was introduced because Madison was unwilling to compromise on his plan where Congress could do everything the states were incompetent to do, and also that the people and not the states who were going to be represented in, in this new national government. And so a compromise was unable to be reached on June the 11th. And so Sherman and others introduced this New Jersey plan, which stripped the structural change that the Virginia plan had introduced. And a deadlock occurred for another few days. And then Hamilton introduced a third plan which seemed to rock everybody. It was sort of out of the ballpark. And then he claimed that um, powers should be even more than what the Virginia plan said and that term limits should be completely removed. And he was accused of, of introducing a, mo a monarchist or an aristocratic plan. And it has often been a question, so what difference did the Hamilton plan make? And part of that understanding is that, well, somehow Hamilton's plan made the Virginia plan look more moderate, and therefore he did his job. The problem with that wonderful interpretation is that no one changed their mind, and very soon after that, Hamilton said, well, when you folks have stopped playing in the sandbox, give me a call, I'm leaving to go to New York. So the Hamilton plan, I think, became important later on once the New Jersey folks and the Virginia folks had settled their differences over representation and power, once they did that, then Hamilton later on could be influential. And so the fourth plan that came is whatever compromises were possible between the New Jersey plan and the Virginia plan became known as the amended Virginia plan. And that's what, it, so that's sort of act one of this four act play or four act drama. Uh, Madison's initial push for some form of nationwide American government was still in place but badly bruised and that accommodation still had to be made. So as the curtain falls on act one, we have an amended Virginia plan with the expectation that we will now go in to fill in the details of what happens. But we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, because that's not what happens. Constitutional Conversations is made possible by a generous grant from the Fairley S. Dickinson Jr. Foundation. Constitutional Conversations is made possible by the James Madison Education Fund.